And hello, I'm uh, Marcus Borden from MyCentralJersey.com, football analyst. Uh, we're here today at South River High School to talk about the 100th anniversary of football. Uh, to my right, we have Mr. Rich Marchese, the head football coach. Okay, we have Mike Lepore, assistant football coach and the head baseball coach. To my left, we have Mr. Uh, Ro Fred Roselli, who is, uh, I would say, the voice of the Rams, and of course, a great historian, too. And to his left, we have Mr. Carl Buffalino, know who is the uh, athletic director here at South River High School. So uh, I think I'll start my first question with uh, Coach Marchese. And uh, I think this is a pretty easy one, Coach. You are the winningest coach here at South River High School. That in itself is a great accomplishment. Uh, we know that uh, this stadium out there is called the Bill Denny Stadium. Uh, he was the winningest football coach here. Uh, and now you have that title. Could you talk to us about that? Yeah, it's a great honor um, to put some years in and, and, and uh, kind of kind of taught the kids, I think, the same way as it's been taught for, uh, that, that Bill Denny taught kids and, and, and taught not only football, but taught uh, life skills and, and what's right and what's wrong in school and out of school, but uh, kind of carry on that tradition of, of, of what uh, Coach Denny started and some of the other great coaches, Bill Shatari, Ron Wojcicki, uh, Joe Bellissimo uh, have followed suit and I'm, I'm just kind of following suit there and keeping the flame alive and and things are going pretty well. You know that's uh, well we're talking about a legacy here and you have continued that legacy. There are certain traditions and things that are done here at South River that aren't done in other programs. So let me talk to Mr. Buffalino about that one since you're the athletic director. What are some of the South River traditions that may not be the same in other schools? Well, I think, Marcus, if we start with this week, um, in two weeks we're going to celebrate the 100 years of, of football with South River, but this week we have homecoming. And I think homecoming at South River is just unique and it's unlike it is anywhere else. For example, this week we have, um, we have competitions between our classes, between the freshmen, juniors, sophomores, and, and seniors. Um, today was Ethnicity Day, so the kids got to wear their... Um, shirts or whatever, of, or their colors, or their flags of wherever they were born, whatever nationality they represent. So we had a whole bunch of nationalities running around to school today. Um, we have pajama day, we have color day, we have maroon and gray day. So we kind of build up until Friday, and Friday we have um, we have our spirit game. So the school, the um, classes co compete in different shooting, basketball shooting, and hula hoops, and jump ropes, and things like that. So it all builds up. And all week they are doing floats. They're making fl they're leaving school. They're going to football practice, soccer practice. Then they're going to build floats. So once they're done building floats, all building up to Saturday. Um, on Saturday we have a big parade through town. Um, we start downtown. We go all the way up Main Street and eventually end up here at Denny Stadium. So between the, the the floats and the homecoming kings and the queens and then our dance, then a football game, and then our dance on um, on Saturday night. I think South River does homecoming great and I think South River does homecoming in a unique way. There's no doubt about it. Uh, having Being a resident of, of yeah. South River m myself, I have uh, had the opportunity to see some of those floats being made up at the fire company. Right. They're kept there. The kids are there. I see them. They've been there at night to putting things together. It's just a phenomenal thing and not many schools still do that and you are a traditional school in that respect and, and of course the parade, the whole deal makes it an exciting event in the town. Yes. Talking about history, I got a historian next to me, and there's no doubt a bit about it that uh, Fred Roselli has uh, great knowledge of the school and his history and his football program. So I'm going to start off right off the bat, Fred, because right. I know you've been passing out some numbers and talking about <laughs> it, but you've already come up with your own top four teams that you yeah. think in the history of South River. Could you tell us about that? Um, I have to thank Al Loswitz for a lot of it, because back years ago he got me information on the earlier mm -hmm. ones. but. I've worked it down to four teams, and I'll do them in reverse order. The 1979 uh, team that played went 10-0-1. They put up 302 points, only gave up 55, had five shutouts. Uh, the number three team I have is the 1966 team. No offense to Joey T or, or Tommy Barra, but I had them ranked as number three. They were 9-0. They scored 269 points, gave up 34, had six shutouts, and only one team scored more than seven points against them. The number two team a lot of people may not be aware of is I have is the 1933 squad. They went 10-0, scored 305 points, 
only gave up 21 with six shutouts, and one team got seven points against them. And the number one squad I have amongst all of them is the 1978 class. Um, they went 11-0, and scored 395 points in one season, averaging between 35 and 40 points a game, gave up a total of 26 points in 11 games, seven shutouts, and nobody reached seven points against them. Well, that's my top four. I'd say there's some impressive, uh, you got some impressive teams there. You know, uh, we have 24 state championships won here at this school. 24. We have, uh, as I see here on this shirt that Coach gave me uh, when I came by in a camp <coughs> caravan. I'm looking at the list here. We got three All Pros. We've got uh, six guys that were All American college football players. Uh, we have a guy that's in the College and Pro Football Hall of Fame, Alex, yeah, Alex Wojciechowicz. Can you tell us a little bit about him while we're at that? Sure. I think you have a little history about Happy. him. Alex Wojciechowicz graduated class in 1932. During his tenure here, the team went 44 wins and only six losses. Um, they were able to put together two state championships. In 1933, they went 10-0, um, gave up a total of 21 points. But Alex went on, uh, went to Fordham. Played on, was one of the seven blocks of granite, played with Vince Lombardi. After that went on, he was All-American at Fordham two years in a row. And after that he went on, finished fourth in the Heisman voting back then. And lastly, played both for the Lions and Eagles and would have won the equivalent of the Super Bowls. They didn't have Super Bowls back in Correct. the 30s, but they won the league championships in 1948 and 1949. <clears throat> You know, when you come to the stadium, you see those banners here on the fence. Uh, you, you see the, na the numbers painted on the back of the Bill Denny Stadium. There's so much history here. But Coach Lepore, you also won a state championship, yeah. 1983. Talk to me about that experience that you had in that season and what it was like to be another one of the guys that brought home a state title. Yeah, 1983 was uh, my sophomore year. I, I, I really didn't have much of a role as a sophomore back then. You, you really didn't get much varsity time. We did have two, two guys that were sophomores that played varsity, uh, that played on um, offense, Joey Chipkowski and Sidney Crawford. Yeah. But as uh, my job uh, on that team was to be the holder for the kicker, and I was on also on kickoff, so I did, you know, limited role. But uh, what I remember about that team is uh, we had a great coaching staff and every player that, I, all the upperclassmen, it was great leadership. They, they bought into what the coaches were saying. It was Coach Chateri, uh, Coach Ruiz, um, my dad, Coach Laporte uh, Sr., and uh, Coach Walt Kajadik. And Coach Kajadik was a defensive uh, wizard. And um, we had uh, a lot of talent. But, but we didn't have the names like, you know, we didn't have a Kenny Jackson. We didn't have a, a Troy Hill. We didn't have the, the big names. We had South River guys that were tough, that were smart, and that they played the game the right way. And uh, we, had been we had come off two years that we had, hadn't won a state championship. We won four straight from 77 to 80. And in 81, we lost in the semifinals to Middlesex. 82, we lost in the finals to Middlesex. And then 83, we got back in there. We, uh, our semifinal game was against um, Keensburg. We won 10-0 uh, that game. And then the final was at home uh, against Dinellon, and we won 21-7. And that's the last time we've won a state championship on our, on our, home, uh, on our home turf. You know, I mean, there's been several guys, and you're one of them, that have been players and now are coaching. Yeah. What drove you back to the well, obviously coaching in, angle? In 1977, my dad became a, a, on the staff. Coach Terry asked him to get on the staff in 77. I was nine years old. So I never missed a game from 77 till up to this year where I actually stepped down this year as a, as a coach. I'm still involved in the program, you know, talking to coach about a lot of things. But um, I got involved because watching and being involved and in watching South River football, never losing. They, they didn't lose. They lost their first game in 77, two to nothing against North Brunswick yeah. in a mud game. And after that, they won, they didn't, they didn't lose for 37 straight games, which the streak was actually broken in 1980 by Spotswood, um, which we, uh, re we, we got revenge on them in the state finals in 1980 by beating them. Uh, but yeah, going back to players that played, you know, we love the game. We love South River football. It meant something to put that uniform on. And then when I got a teaching job here, uh, 
I, I lucked <clears> out and there was a coach position. And the same thing goes for Jimmy Makowitz. Eddie Chickie was a player here that, that became a coach. Jimmy Makowitz, uh, Ian Ivanovich, Joey Shateri, uh the young A long brothers, list, yeah, believe me. Joey Young. <laughs> Joey, uh, the young. Bobby <laughs> Young, you know, and They're I all... can go on and on and have, you know, they yeah. were... They love the game. They love South River football, and that's why they're back. You know, it's uh, Coach Marchese. You uh, were under Coach Sateri. Uh, I, I know Bill, uh, you know, when I first got here in 83, um, Booney, I know Coach Kajotic. I, I mean, you know, guys that uh, bled the colors, you know, maroon and gray. Uh, talk to me about playing for Coach Sateri. Wow, there's a lot of respect there because uh, he didn't get the nickname Wild Bill for no reason. Um, he, 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 he had a way of doing things that uh, I remember, unlike today's rules with the state involved, um, we used to practice three hours a day, um, probably pretty much full contact for two and a half, three hours. Um, we would be lucky to get a water break. We got a water break, he would time it, so there would be like a 30 second or a one minute uh, a water break. And it, We'd be on the practice field, and the water would be 75 yards across on the game field. So we had a sprint again, conditioning, <laughs> sprint across, and then come back. And uh, it, it was it was a matter of respect. Um, I'm not saying we were afraid to lose, but we were afraid to lose not for Bill, but afraid to lose um, because we were playing for South River, the um, town, the e town. Exactly right. That's the exactly. difference. You're playing for the town. It's like a Pennsylvania town. When I came here, there was something different about this town compared to some of the other towns. It's a blue-collar town. Talk to me about that. I can remember Bill on sidelines as a player, and then I was grateful enough to coach with him on his staff when I was a first-year coach, but he would want that play run, whatever it was, a 25 or a 35 or a 41, and if they stopped this, he would just yell it out. It wouldn't matter. The other coach would hear, you know, he would, wouldn't yell a number. He would just say, run it again. We're coming. So he, he would want, he would want, he would demand that perfection. And I think that's on the back of our shirts. Um, tradition, perfection, uh, that, that, that's all under Bill Shateri. And uh, I think nowadays in, in, in a lot of sports, it's, it's very difficult to attain perfection, but you always want to strive for that. And again, playing under Bill and, and coaching under Bill, uh, that was one of his mantras, uh, you know, perfection. You know, you have uh, a school that's won 580 football games. Um, something's been carried on, a tradition like no other. You, I mean, there, when you think of programs in the state of New Jersey, you have to include South River into that because, I mean, it, it just speaks for itself. And those coaches that have been here have laid the groundwork and you guys just continue to put brick after brick in there and teams your teams come out there's just nothing like it so fred uh, mr historian i mean you know you were a classmate of uh, drew pearson yes uh you know he played uh, i think there's a ball right up here that says he played in the super bowl that's why that gold football's yep. up there can you talk to us a little bit about drew and his legacy here in south river one thing you knew about Drew, and, and a lot of people that grew up around him and all, A, he was down to earth, but he was a motivator, and he would be able to instill in the other players what was needed. Um, in his earlier years, because back when I was in high school, freshmen weren't playing varsity ball. You, know, you, you had to work your way up to the high school to do that, but he was one of the key receivers for Joey T. And Joe Theismann was here, and uh, when Joe left, Drew stepped right into the quarterback slot. And like it was nothing, he took it over uh, during his senior year or during his two years going on maybe two and a half years, he threw for over 3,000 yards. This is a guy who was a receiver all along, fit right into it. He would adjust to whatever the coaches wanted. Put up 29 touchdowns, did a lot. But the nice part about Drew, and I, I, good fortune is I still keep in touch with him, whenever he comes back, last year, uh, two years ago he was here, Coach Marchese had him here for the breakfast. That's been a tradition here. He took the time out. I was watching because I was at the breakfast. And he took the time out instead of eating, walking around and talking to all the football players. Talking to them. You ready for today's game? You know you got to go out there and be prepared. You gotta. This was what he does. And, and his kids would look at him. He had his Super Bowl ring. And, and, and they, Mr. Pearson, can I try that ring on and all? He, he was so much down to earth. But that's the way he grew up. And he just motivated never forgot home 
uh, things came up where they'd be looking to raise funds or something, he'd send over some autographed memorabilia, whether it's by him and the team and the squad and all. Um, great guy, great guy, but definitely a motivator. So, Carl, uh, the other guy for that other football is uh, Joe Thiesman, or shall Thiesman. we call him Joe Thiesman. Right. Um, back on campus, uh, a 67 graduate of the high school, uh, celebrated the 50th anniversary a couple years ago. Yes. Uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting Joe Thiesman uh, working in an all-star game. Uh, tell me a little bit about him and what it was like for the community to have him come back and recognize South River as uh, his hometown. Yeah, Joe came back, with, like, like you said, two years ago um, for his class reunion, and, and, and Fred was right. Like, was, I think it was a year before that Drew came yep. back. So you can kind of put both of them in, you know, in the same question, in Absolutely. the same sentence. And I think, in my opinion, Marcus, I think it's, it, it's twofold. I, I think the, they both took the time to um, speak to our athletes, to our football players, you know, Drew at breakfast. And then Joe actually came in at halftime and spoke to our kids for a little bit. And, um, you know, I think their perspective, meaning our student athletes, our football players, they, it's, a, it's a great opportunity because they can look at Joe and they can look at Drew and they can say, you know what, here's two guys that walked the same streets that I did, played pickup basketball or football in the same parks that I did, kids that sat in the same classroom as I did. And if they can make it, if they can do, have the, the set the goals and the accomplishments and achieve what they did, then why can't I? So I think it's a great motivating factor for, for our football players and our student athletes to see that and to see these guys come back. Plus, I think it's a great, on the other side, it's a great opportunity for the town. It's a great opportunity for, you know, like, like to see, like just older generations or, you know, anybody sitting in the stands at Denny Stadium kind of looking down and saying, my God, like that, that's Joe or, or, or that's Drew. And, and being very proud of the, the town of South River and what's come out of South River. So I think it's awesome for the town and I think it's just as awesome for the kids that they can look at it and say, I can do that one day. And I think that's the, what's so unique is that those guys do come back yeah. and share their experiences, that they're down to earth kind of people yep. that, you know, they played here, they have no problem coming back and they participate in, in the activities. Not to interject, Marcus, but they had in South River a Joe Theismann day when he was in college and Texas, which was ranked tops, got knocked off by Notre Dame where Joe quarterbacked and they had a parade right up Main Street and all, mob, you would have thought, it was the president. This was the town coming out to him. They awarded him the key to the town and all, but Carl's right. That's, that's just brings the town together. Tremendous. So Coach Marchese, there are names that just seem to resonate in South River. You know, the Jacksons, the Hills. You know I know those names. You know those names. What is it about just churning out player after player? The tradition, the family, uh, the pressure to, to carry on that name. Yeah, you said it. I mean, uh, I remember being in school and uh, playing football with Kenny Jackson and Keith Hudak and uh, all, my, all my players were my, my best buddies. Um, we played for a long time together. We played th up through Pop Warner. So, you know, you hear scenarios in, in other towns where, you know, this team was, was good X number of years ago and they came up through the Pop Warner. We had the same uh, situation where I was a center and Keith Hudak was a quarterback in Pop Warner maybe three or four years leading up to uh, we became freshmen as freshmen. Uh, we had a freshman team. Uh, we were undefeated as a freshman team. We played Hammerschold, uh, we played Edison, we played uh, Sereville, we played a number of bigger schools, and, and we're, we were pretty good. Um, and then in high school, uh, I think just playing under Bill and uh, the way he steered us and the way he um, uh, took us under his wing, and uh, uh, we had a lot of talent. No doubt we had a lot of talent. Uh, we had a lot of confidence. It wasn't being cocky or anything like that. Um, but each one of us was willing to listen. Unlike some athletes today, when you tell them to do things, they want to do things their own way. Uh, when Bill Shatari or, or Michael Poor Sr. or, or Boone, uh, Booney Kajadik, Walt Kajadik would tell us how to do this play or how to get into this stance, you know, uh, yes sir, and that was it. We would, we would correct it. Now times with, with kids nowadays you get you know, I know. They, you know, they know, they know, they know. So it, it's a little bit more pulling teeth involved with kids nowadays. Uh, again, when we played, um, we listened and we were 
pretty confident and uh, a very, very talented group. Well, it's, you know, the one thing it is about, it's not a video game. It's blocking and tackling. It's going out. Thank and God there was no things. video game back when we were in school. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what made right. us I mean, it, you know, you're not winning a Madden championship. No. You're out trying to win a, you know, a state championship. Well, we weren't practicing here. We were probably in someone's backyard tackling and, and blocking. So. Right. And we, knew, we were never worried about that. So, uh, Coach Lepore, uh, you, you got a chance to play football, and your dad was a, a coach yeah. out there. How, how was that sitting at the dinner table? <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, he, he, always, he, was, uh, he was my biggest supporter. You know, uh, I remember one, one good memory I had with him is the night before the championship game, we took a walk up to the, to the field and just walked around and talked. And, uh, and, um, and then the next day we won the, won the whole thing. But it was, that's, that's, that's the reason why I coach. That's the reason why I teach is, uh, you know, just following everything that he did and, you know. I don't know what that walk is up to that feels yeah. like because, you know, I spent some time in your Pop Warner program here uh, coaching uh, the Pop Warners and saw some of those kids <coughs> that my son had an opportunity to play with and then those guys that became stars later on for you and, uh, and the walk up to that field, you know, from coming off the, you know, the side fields over here to walk up into that stadium, there was a little aura to it. And, you know, and, and I'm not a South River born guy. I'm a guy that came here. So, I mean, I knew what it meant to those kids to go up into that Pro stadium. Probably one of the reasons why I've been here as long as I have. It's hard to get away from that when, when uh, after breakfast, when you walk up there or, or when you go under the stadium or behind the stadium in pregame and, and you walk out 10 minutes before the coin toss and then you come out and that stadium's, you know, packed up and uh, there's definitely a buzz about we it. We used to say that we were up 7 nothing before the even game even started because it was just an intimidating, yeah. intimidating <laughs> place to, to walk into, you know, coming into that stadium and still a grass field. Uh, a lot of times back in the day when we were in the 70s, we were packed. There was, there was standing yeah. room only. Well, and, uh, I, you know, I, I know we're getting close to time here, and I want to get into some fast money type questions here. And speaking of that stadium and that grass, how come we don't have lights, Carl? Why, why does South River not? <laughs> why, are there, why are there no lights here in uh, South River? That's a tough question because I could give you about nine different answers. Well, I only but need I a think, couple. You know, I'll give you, and I'll make it real quick. I think it is the – there's been certain opportunities, you know, talk about turf and talk about lights. I, I just think, as the coaches just said, I think it's the tradition of it where we – everybody's going turf lights Thursday night, Friday night. We like grass on our football field and we like Saturday afternoon football games. You know what I do and I too. Think that's the I'll, I'll tell you what, I like I like going out on a Saturday to cover a football game in the day. It's it's a little different yeah. now because we're so used to Friday mm -hmm. night lights. You know, you said Thursday night lights, Wednesday games, yeah. whenever. Uh, and now to come on a Saturday, well, hey, rain or shine, it's just great to go to a Saturday day game. So, Fred, I'm going to ask you, because I know you are involved in the Bill Denny chapter uh, right. with Rutgers now, as we've joined forces with that, uh, and uh, you're very involved with that. So, while we're talking about Rutgers, since you have a little bit of an insight, who's the next coach? That one I can't tell you. There's been a lot <laughs> thrown around. We just had a meeting yesterday where we were talking about it, and you hear possibility Shiano. Here, people, no, we don't want him. He had his time here. Someone else along the way. Um, I don't think they know right now. I think they're still looking around to find out what they need to do to get that program turned around. Right. Because no matter who they bring up there, it's not going to be a one or a two year turnaround. Right. So let's talk about that connection now with the Bill Denny <clears throat> chapter and Rutgers sure. because now when the scholar athletes, it's the, the program has been run with them, you know, joining forces. Talk to me a little bit about it's, that. It's a fabulous program. Bill Denny chapter was formed in 1968. And originally, and a lot of people may not be aware of it, they wanted to name it the Alex Lowe Jehovah's uh, chapter. And Alex said, no, if anybody deserves it, it's Bill Denny. Bill Denny made South River football what it was. And what we do is, for 10 months of the year, we go out and we raise funds. Uh, volunteer A, B, C, D, get a hold of corporate sponsors, whoever we can. All the money that we raise, we do a big banquet, usually in March or April. Uh, this past year, we, we hit our pinnacle broke $25,000 in scholarships that we contribute back. Each town throughout now Middlesex and part of Somerset County right. submit to us their top scholar athlete. We have no, nothing to do with the selection of who they are. We then have a committee that will rank them one through 35 or whatever it is. Um, it 
it brings out all the good in kids. Um, I have a soft spot for kids. Um, you always read in the paper every day, this kid did this, this one was arrested. I wish there would be more publicity about the good thing about these kids. When you would go, I had the good fortune of going to some of the national banquets, and you have the four top scholars from the United States, and you listen to them, and you just, wow, and this kid's only 17. So, you know, the Bill Denny chapter has uh, churned out some pretty good uh, scholar athletes. That they it's have. It's been a great thing all along. So, Coach Marchese, i got to ask you this. What's with the border war? <laughs> Spotswood and, and South River. Talk to me about that. What is that? Absolutely. Uh, when, I was, when I was an underclassman here, when, uh, for example, when I was a freshman, I had uh, so, uh, Spotswood went to this school. So uh, we were a mixture of South River and Spotswood kids. Got along well. Um, I believe my sophomore year they decided to build a, build a, uh, a high school over in Spotswood. Those, those athletes and those students went over to there. My junior year, they actually started football, and it was a JV program. And then again, my senior year, our final year, uh, they played varsity football for the first time. And that's kind of where the whole, that's kind of how where that border war started. And it's it's a good, healthy rivalry. Oh, it is. Not only is. in yes. football, but in all yes. sports. Them, yes, them, it is. Them breaking our 37-game winning streak probably. I, th I think the 500th win, though, was against Spotswood, yeah, the way yeah. I see right there's here some, in 2004. Uh, so, in place that I mean, that must have that worked out real nice, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. So, Coach, uh, let me ask you. You've, you've played, you've coached baseball, you've coached football. In your estimation, who's one of the best all-around athletes out of South River? Uh, no doubt about it. My, my, my opinion, no doubt about it, was probably Kenny Jackson. I mean, I grew up watching him play. I was the ball boy while he was playing. I, I remember just watching him. He, he had so much speed, and he was just um, so much better than anybody else on the field. One time against Highland Park, I'm pretty sure it was against Highland Park, he broke one, and he was so far away from everybody else, he turned around and handed the ball off to one of the linemen that was trailing him and let the linemen score the touchdown. You remember that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but as a as – a, a, you know, involved in South River football, Kenny had to be one of the best athletes. He was first team uh, All State Star Ledger in football, first team All State basketball. Star Ledger in basketball, and first team All State Star Ledger in, in uh, track. And, and two time tournament champions winner. Yeah, in and, track. and he also played baseball as a freshman, and it was pretty good from what I heard from my dad. Uh, the, one of the best athletes that I've ever coached in my 25 years here. Uh, I don't want to make his head any bigger than it is, but it's probably <laughs> got to be Mike Feaster. He, has, he was a two-time uh, yeah, state I, champ. I think uh, he was a pretty good player. He, I was, think, he uh, had a pretty good career here in all, in yeah. all sports. Well, you know, I, I, I'm sure we could sit here and talk all day, and I know Coach has to get to practice because we have a, a homecoming game uh, on Saturday here uh, against uh, Donellan. Uh, we are celebrating that 100 years. Uh, I know you got a new jersey that you'll be wearing. I'm sure the kids are excited about it. Uh, I'm going to be excited to be here to experience the, the thrill of what you guys are all about here in South River. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Joel DeRold, who uh, is uh, the official videographer for MyCentralJersey.com. He's also involved in the Autoland Classic. And, of course, I certainly want to thank Greg Tafaro from uh, my son to Jersey for setting us up today. It was a great time to have an opportunity to talk to you guys. I'm sure we could sit down at 33s and talk for hours about uh, <laughs> South River football. But it's been my pleasure to be here today, and I want to thank you and see you on Saturday, 1 o'clock for a kickoff against the Donnellan Destroyers.